protagonist isn't a white guy. The games industry, like so many industries, is racist. I know it, you know it, and if you don't know it, you're probably racist too. All throughout time, we've had to suffer the onslaught of a never-ending horde of pale, white, brown-haired, slimmer, muscular cis men in their early thirties, with the few exceptions usually being portrayed in some cringeworthy manner or another. There have been great, uh, great exceptions, of course, such as Chell from Portal, though some argue her stature as a silent protagonist diminishes the effect, and there's certainly some merit to that idea but they're still so few and far between that it's worth noting whenever it happens. There's a lot of whining by the industry and fan base that uh, games with non-white protagonists won't sell, or uh, gamers need someone they can identify with, as if a only white people are gamers, b white people are somehow incapable of empathising with a person of colour yet are capable of empathising with a purple dragon or anthropomorphic bandicoot, and it's great to see a game like this come along and show that line of thinking up as the baloney that it is. I stand firmly with the voices hoping for a woman protagonist in Season 2. 2. Well-rounded, three-dimensional, flawed characters, all of which are sympathetic in their own way. Except Larry. And Ben. I haven't read the Walking Dead comics or seen the Walking Dead show, so this may be par the course for the series, but in my experience of zombie flicks, you've got a handful of characters. Bland white male hero promiscuous woman who dies violently in the end, wallflower woman who doesn't die or sometimes does die, pregnant woman who will provide the gory shock value birth scene, pregnant woman's husband who constantly holds her hand and is either worried or angry all the time, guy who is unrealistically casual about it all and puts the team in danger, and guy who panics at the drop of a hat and puts the team in danger, and that's about it. Oh, and annoying child. In this game, we have a whole slew of characters with their own unique feel and struggle, and whether you're with them or at odds with them can change depending on the situation, especially with Kenny, who seems to go from loyal friend who's got your back to antagonistic presence willing to let you die to loyal friend again in a pretty believable manner. Though, of course, that depends on your choices. If you oppose him a lot more on a lot more of the issues, he's likely to remain non-loyal. Lee is a man trying to make up for his wrongdoings in the past by protecting Tangerine in the New World. Kenny is a man trying to do the best he can for his family, but he's hot. But his hot temper and his belief that he's always right puts him at odds with many other characters. Same goes for Lily, only with slightly different circumstances. Ben, for all the hatred he gets, is a good character too. I don't think I've ever seen a zombie story explore the unique tragedy of someone who wants to help, but is just so damned useless he's a danger to the group as a whole. Usually with these things, the characters who are dangerous to the group are obnoxious assholes, so it was nice to see this angle explored. Arguably, the star of the show is Clementine, who despite being a small child you have to protect throughout the whole thing, succeeds in never being annoying or a liability. In fact, she's incredibly capable, and I admit that I sometimes find myself wondering if a real eight-year-old child would be as stable as she is in the face of everything she sees and goes through. Admittedly, I have no real frame of reference, as I don't know any real eight-year-olds who have been in Undead Apocalypsi which I have decided is the plural to Apocalypse. I was initially impressed with Clementine's acting, but have since discovered that her voice actor is 37 years old and therefore cheating. Had this series been a film, you can bet that Clementine would have been wooden as hell. All in all, Walking Dead succeeds in making you care about the characters, even the ones you meet halfway through, like Omid and Krista. There are two exceptions in my eyes. The first is Larry, who is a bit too much of an ass to stomach, and who, I remind you all, try to kill Lee something that all the in-game characters seem to gloss over. The second is Mark, who really just showed up out of nowhere, ostensibly met in between episodes 1 and 2. He seemed nice, and though his death is gruesome and horrifying, I can't really say I felt anything for the character himself. They'd have been better off just not having Glenn leave at the end of episode 1 and, take it, and him taking Mark's place. 3. A focus on drama over action. Admittedly, again, I haven't seen the Walking Dead television show or read the Walking Dead comic book, so maybe this is part of the course of the franchise as well, but I was incredibly impressed by the game's focus on drama and the human conflict that occurs in the situations these characters are placed in. See, all in all, I don't much care for the zombie genre because that sort of thing is sorely lacking in other games. Maybe I haven't seen the right films, or the ones I have seen are all gore and horror and terrible characters doing terrible things that make them far less likeable than the shambling horrors they evade. Even George Romero's mighty Dawn of the Dead was a boring watch for me. Like, oh yeah, the zombies are a metaphor for consumerism. Well done, George. And the characters were killed at the end because of a biker gang. Humans are the real monsters. Profound stuff right there, sir. 
On a mini digression, a lot of people seem way too impressed by that M Romero metaphor. The whole consumerism culture of zombies thing, like, it's not that clever. I get the appeal of feeling all smug, pushing your glasses at the crook of your nose and declaring that you're better than all the sheeple, but man, that half-baked metaphor got accolades it did not deserve. And I think later f films have proven what a hack he is, like Diary of the Dead, where this time zombies are a metaphor for internet users. Yeah, those people going online, searching the web, reading, writing, interacting with other people in a way not previously possible. What zombies? Mindless drones, I tell you. Never mind that the internet can be a fantastic resource for learning and is far more mentally stimulating than sitting through any of the schlock this guy's churned out. Sorry that digression wasn't as mini as I thought, but yes, the point is The Walking Dead game restored my faith in zombies as being any sort of platform for good games and storytelling. I think we've had a bit of a glut of zombies in gaming these past few years, either in the form of shoddy horror games, or just egregiously shoved in places where they absolutely didn't belong, like in Crackdown 2, which, okay, Crackdown wasn't good to begin with, but why zombies in Crackdown 2? It makes no sense. Or the DLC for Red Dead Redemption, which despite having dead in the name is actually an incredibly well done western, not a zombie horror, so what the hell? Walking Dead has given me hope for quality zombies again, and I look forward to season two. And now to top off this glowing review with some plot holes. Not necessarily a plot hole, but how lucky is it that he found Clementine in the very first house he checked, and then found people who could give them a ride right outside the front gate? How about that boat that just happened to be in the shed of the first house they hid in? I mean, yeah, ultimately amounts to nothing, but that was still a hell of a stroke of luck. How did Clementine drag Lee off the street, swarming with zombies and into a building? That girl is strong as hell. Why did Lee break the lock to the pharmacy door instead of looking around the pharmacy for a code? Like in the office or something? It was bound to be somewhere. Even if it wasn't, he could at least have tried. Why was Clementine in first grade? She seems to be very intelligent. Even if she had a poor grasp of, like, maths and writing or whatever, how bad would you have to be to be held back that young? Just what the hell is the range on Clem's walkie-talkie anyway? Okay, I suppose what with the car being found in episode 2, we can assume the stranger has been pretty close by to us the whole time. But unless he was lying at the end of episode 3, then he was already in Savannah and we still had several miles to go. How did Vernon steal the boat anyway? That shit is heavy. Seriously, why does no one care that Larry tried to kill Lee? This has been my review of The Walking Dead. I will see you next for my very late, no longer relevant at all review of Batman, and then we'll be going into Walking Dead 400 Days.